For over 20 years, I've dedicated my life to bringing you the very best selling, marketing, and business building strategies to keep your business thriving. Get ready to experience the success you've been searching for. Welcome to the Tom Ferry Show. Hey everybody, welcome to the Tom Ferry Show. I am so fired up today. Last week, Bill Pipes and I were talking about ways to improve your confidence. And specifically, Bill said, you should work on your listing presentation, that that should be the skill, that if there was just one thing you wanted to get really good at, that would be it. Why? Because if I'm comfortable and confident going into a stranger's house or friends or past clients or whatever it is and presenting my value and my service in a way that's meaningful and impactful, that's different and relevant, then customers are going to say yes. And when I get that yes, it's like any other behavior, right? When you get that feeling, that rush of this was really good, I want to do it all the time, then guess what? You're going to make your calls. You're going to go after every possible seller lead. You're going to do it with so much more conviction. So I thought what I would do today is I would dig into some of the private conversations I've been having with a bunch of my personal clients and reveal to you five super sexy, insanely great. Did I just say super sexy on the Tom Ferry show? I think I did. If you end this video at the 10 minute mark, you're going to lose the best one. So you got to really pay attention. This is going to be one of those you're not going to want to send to your friends. You're not going to share this around the office. You're going to keep this like just for you and you're going to watch this video at least 15 times and then I'm going to get like private mess. Oh my God, thank you so much. I can't believe it. I'm, I, I just beat the number one agent in my office and I'm going to be like this. Like that's how good this is. And I think I'm like tooting my own horn here for a second. But I'm just, are you with me? Like, I'm really pumped. So, five ways to improve your listing presentation. We're gonna do some that are, are gonna feel a little basic, but when we get over into this stuff, oh, just wait. Here we go. Obvious, right? So, if I wanna be a better presenter, my speech coach, Ron Arden, God bless him, passed away a few years ago. First thing he would say to me in his beautiful little South African accent, which I'm not even gonna attempt, was, Tom, rule number one is know your customer. Know your customer. What are their needs? What are their wants? What are their issues? What are their challenges? Well, today, today, do you realize I can use Equifax or Speedion and Marnie, I can know their credit score before they walk in. All I need is an email address. I can get your credit score. I can know what you spent at Nordstrom's last week. I can get your shopping behaviors. It's pretty incredible what we have access to today, but let's talk about the basics. Ready? Know your customer. Should you go to their social sites and at least get a sense of who they are, right? What do they like to do? What are they all about? You know, people are putting themselves out there every single day on Facebook and Instagram and you know, Snapchat and everything else, and we really get a sense of who they are. Now, what are we looking for? We're looking for relatedness. I want to relate to you. I want to understand who you are and look for that commonality, that easy rapport building stuff, right? But I also put down LinkedIn, know what they're doing professionally. That's important, right? Get a sense of who they are. Like maybe they're, uh, like yesterday, I met with a client who's the VP of Sega, right? So, so we talked about gaming and marketing and big business. That relatability made it easier for Lydia Gable, big shout out to Lydia, for us to connect on a level that would be different if I didn't understand her professional background. Does that make sense? Do you do that with every client already? If you do, no brainer. Number two is obviously pre-qualify under knowing your customer. So, you know, who's involved in the process? What is it you want to accomplish, right? When do you want to start the process? Where are you guys moving to? Why do you want to move there? How much do you want to sell your home frame? What's the time frame you want to get it done in, different from when do you want to start? When do you want to be sold and done by in that new location? And then I love the question, what's your plan B? So what's your plan B if it doesn't work out? So I'm going to do this all over the phone, pre-qualifying to make sure that I know who they are. I'm not going to say, hey, I'm stalking you on Facebook and wow, I saw you, you know, drinking a beer the other day. Like, not going to do that. But I want to know who they are. What are they all about? Check out their LinkedIn background. Have an understanding of who they are professionally. And then obviously, I'm going to ask all the pre-qualifying questions to really understand what is driving the motivation to move. Remember, if they have really low motivation, generally speaking, what do they want to price the house? Really high. If they want really high or they have really high motivation, we're going to be more priced appropriately to help them get what they want. And remember, it doesn't matter how good of a presenter you are, if they don't want to sell, who cares, right? There's, there's no presentation that's going to convince them to sell. Your job is to help them understand why they should choose you over the competition. Does that make sense? Now, 
What's your plan B in case it doesn't work out? If we don't get the price, the time, etc., what's your plan B? Well, we can always keep it, we can always rent it out, we have no problem, we're in no urgency. That's an important question that we're not asking today. And, and what happens is you're going on appointments and realizing that their motivation isn't where you want it to be. So number one, know the client. Number two, prime the client for a yes and do your homework. So do your homework. You know, the number one thing is to know the comps, right? To know the market, but don't just know the last 30 days, the last 60 days, the last 90 days. Did you see the houses? Did you walk through the properties? Do you really know what was for sale? Even if it was just going and looking at 25 videos, uh, you know, online through the MLS, to really know the, you know, the area, the community, was it a nice house, was it a bad house? So when they say, well, our neighbors sold for, you can say, yes, I know why, but remember, they converted under the stairs that whole extra room into a wine cellar and a wine bar, and, and you know, your property doesn't have that, it brought a little more value to know those details. You know what it is? We did a video a long time ago called Be the Knowledge Broker, right? Be the Knowledge Broker. The person that knows the market and the homes better than anybody else is the one that's gonna rise above and be the obvious choice. So this is like Be the Knowledge Broker stuff. Next thing on the list, obviously prime the client for a yes. So remember a few videos back, and I won't bore you with it again, um, but search. Remember I said, if you wanna win every listing, remember that video, if you wanna win every listing, you send a bomb bomb video in advance before your appointment, thanking them for meeting with you and then requesting that they review all those key things that was included in the email. Remember your Zillow reviews, your track record, you know, the three to five things you do differently or better than everybody else. And maybe, you know, your entire marketing plan contrasted everybody else, a photo of your team, etc. So what we're doing is we're, we're priming the pump and we send it through BombBomb Bomb so we know that they opened the video, we know that they watched the video because that's what BombBomb Bomb does. It, it lets you know those two things, which I think is important. Now, I said to you five ways to improve. I bet you're doing all that stuff. And if you're not, listen, listen, you gotta start here. I'm gonna get a little advanced with you. You ready? Number three is not that advanced. Number four and five, 4A. Just wait for 4A. Here we go, you ready? I'm not sure how this is gonna work, Danny, but here we go, ta-da! Number three, show up mentally prepared. I know that sounds easy. Has there ever been a time you went on a presentation and you showed up late, late, late? Talk about a way to instantly create the opposite of rapport by disrespecting the customer and showing up late. The reality is, my friends, I know we've all been there, traffic, this, that, you have no idea. I get it, I get it, I get it. You know, I, I learned a long time ago, if you wanna be on time, leave 15 minutes earlier than you think you need to leave and you will always get there a little bit earlier and be ready to go. But the bigger issue is showing up mentally prepared. I like to stop before every presentation and I close my eyes and I just say, okay, who's my customer? And I go back through all this information and I think about what is my outcome? What do I wanna do? I wanna bring them value. I wanna separate myself from the competition if there is any. I wanna become the obvious and no-brainer yes. And I wanna make it easy and elegant and beautiful. I don't wanna be a 19-year-old dude trying to close on the first date, right? Remember that old line? We don't wanna be that guy or that gal. Easy, elegant, no-brainer, remove all the resistance, create lots of trust, and make this process easy for them. Because let's face it, do, how long do you want a salesperson in your house? I mean, if you really put it in context, you want that person in and out pretty quickly and you'd like it to be smooth and easy and no resistance. Well, don't you think most customers are just like you? So I say show up mentally prepared knowing the customer. Now, let's go a little advanced, you ready? Number four, I believe that sales is a story and my experience is most people, the vast majority of agents, start their listing presentation the same exact way. Hi, Bob and Mary, thanks so much for having me over. I'm really excited, let's go take a look at the home. All that stuff, I get it, it's, it's all part of the deal. But starting your presentation, starting how you start, if you frame it with a story, if you begin with a hook, then you immediately create interest. You immediately capture them and more importantly, you separate yourself from the competition. You see most of your competition walks in and says, hi, thank you so much. Let me tell you about my company. Let me tell you about me. Let me show you all my awards. Let me show all my prizes. Let me show you my And then let me show you the marketing of all the websites I've never been to, blah, 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 blah. It's the same thing everywhere you go. Now, I probably have your attention. Do I have your attention? I should. 
consider the following. You ready? Sales is about storytelling. It's always been about storytelling. Here's a story. You ready? If we're in a seasoned agent or an experienced agent, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, um, thank you so much for having me over. I have been on 62 appointments like this in the last 12 months. 58 of those people chose to list with us. At the end of every meeting, I'll sit in my car for 15, sometimes 20 minutes, and I will just, I'll debrief. I open up Evernote and I start writing notes about every question they asked. What was important? What were their concerns? What made them nervous? How do I make the process easy and smooth for my clients? Because so selling a home can be stressful. So you know what I've discovered after doing this now for three years, 60, 70 times a year, each time having you know 55 to 60 list their home with me, I've discovered there's only five things that were important to every client I've ever met with. Would you like to see the list? Would you like to go through the five? Now, that's a little bit different from, here's my company, here's my company, right? Now, I'm not dogging you and your company. I'm just saying, if you're in a hyper-competitive marketplace, you've got to do something different and stand out. The story you create is how you will stand out. Now, if I'm a new agent, what am I going to do? I'm just going to flip it and say, you know, our firm has successfully listed and sold over 275 homes. And every week at our team meeting, all the agents get together and we debrief on all the new listings we've taken and what were the concerns and what were the issues and what were the challenges of the seller. And we've discovered there's only five things that are important to every client we've ever served in this community. Would you like to go through the five? That's a little bit better than trying to figure out how do I navigate as a new agent. Does that make sense? So what's your story? What's your story that's going to prime the customer, hook the customer, create some interest, create some intrigue like, well, what are the five? Like, I, I don't know. And by the way, when you then say, would you like to see the five? And they say, yes, guess what? They're engaged with you. Now they're listening through a filter of what are the five things. You've got their interest. You now have permission to speak life into their concerns, their worries, their challenges. And listen, last time I checked, selling is the ability to tell a story and ask questions that naturally and automatically lead you and the customer to a mutually desired end result right? It's not supposed to be stressful. It's not supposed to be intense. It's supposed to be natural and automatic. And that's what we're attempting here. So let's keep going. You ready? So show up mentally prepared. Sales is a story. Open with a better story to hook them in a way that's interesting, that has them listen. And then would you like to know the five? Would you like to know the seven? Would you like to know the 11 things that every one of our customers was interested in? I just had this conversation with one of my clients because she has uh, the same question on every presentation. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, every time I'm meeting with a wonderful couple like you that's interested in selling in the ocean, you know, their home on the ocean front, the number one question we get is how are you going to attract the international buyers? Which is why several years ago we created the Gellens Report. This is Maxine and Marty Gellens, right? We created the Gellens Report. Every year we do an exhaustive research piece on every property that was sold along the coast between Point Loma, La Jolla, Del Mar, etc. And I think it's gonna, you're gonna find this interesting. Let's look at the report. Only 4% of all the buyers actually came from international. And yet, every client we meet with says, how are you gonna find the international buyers? When the truth is, what you really should be asking is, how are you gonna find the buyers in Texas, Arizona, Nevada, and throughout San Diego County, which is where 96% of the buyers come from. Does that make sense? What the? What the? You with me? Like awesome stuff speaking directly into what's going on in the mind of the customers. All right, so let's keep going. Taz, over here. I created 4A for the first time ever on a Tom Ferry show. Can you just look at this? And maybe, Taz, can you, can you maybe go in a little tighter on it? Here's five things that every customer, so Mr. and Mrs. Seller, we met with 65 people in the last 12 months, 270 in the last five years. And after a 15 or 20 minute debrief on every time, they really were concerned about five things. How are you gonna get me the most possible money for my home? How much time is it going to take for me and for you in the process? Have you done it over and over again before? Like, do you have a track record? Do, is there proof? And then what's your marketing plan? Like, how are you gonna market and expose the property to make sure that the highest number of buyers ultimately see the home? And then the last one is, 
Who else is involved? What's the team? What's the process? So let's go through those together. And now, right, now we're speaking directly into what's important to the customer. Does that make sense? Now, I'm making up these five. This is stuff that I work on with a bunch of clients that it resonates for them. You might have 11 things. You know your customer better than I do. You, you know, if you're in uh, you know, Milwaukee, what's important to them this time of the year versus springtime, summertime, winter, right? If you're in Toronto, Ontario, Canada, you know, maybe staging is the hot thing or how do we compete against the condo market as an example. Rule number one is know your customer, think about the story that hooks them in, and then I begin to show. Now, I like big, obvious visuals. You with me? Um, yesterday, I looked at somebody's listening presentation, and I, I opened up, and here's the first thing I saw, Marty, a photo of this person on every page. I was like, look, after the third page, I know what you look like, and since this photo doesn't actually look like you, it's kind of awkward. And then I said to her, wouldn't it be funny if you were wearing the same exact outfit on the appointment as the photo? Like, that would just be hysterical. White space is okay in your presentation. Big, obvious photo fonts are okay. Like, everyone understands a dollar sign. Everybody understands a clock. Everybody understands performance and track record. Marketing, right, and who's involved. Big obvious, visual, simple, clean, you turn the page, there's the next one. All my clients are interested in money. All my clients are interested in time. All my clients are interested in have you done it before, right? Do you have a track record? Here's my Zillow reviews. Here's my map, right? This could just as easily be your map with every one of your transactions, right? How are we going to market it? We're going to cover that today, Mr. and Mrs. Seller, and then ultimately the team and the process so you know that while I'm here, there's a group of people behind me that are handling phone calls, taking care of transactions, servicing our customers to bring the most possible value. Does that make sense? Right? Bam. You with me on this? Now again, I'm not trying to change your entire presentation from beginning to end. I said to you, Bill Pipes, the extraordinary coach, the leader of our Sales Edge Conference, who's out talking, he's already trained a thousand agents this year, three days of role playing, he'll, he'll end up training, I'm gonna guess, five or six thousand this year. He said, work on your listing presentation, make your listing presentation better, and by doing that, you'll wanna naturally and automatically go do everything else in your business because whoever gets all the listings wins, right? But this is the effect. If I've got this down, I'll do all the things I have to do, the cause to get there. Does that make sense? So let's finish strong with my favorite one. All right, think about this in relationship to how most agents go in and present. We walk in with this assumption of, let me make a bunch of promises to you. These are all the things I'm going to do, right? In the next 72 hours, we're gonna blah, 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 blah. In the next you know, uh, 48 hours, this'll happen. But in the first week, we're gonna do this. And it's, it's these promises of things that are going to happen in the future. It's what everybody does. It's what's always been done. What if you reverse engineered it? What if you took a different approach called it a case study, made it a hundred times more relatable to the customer, but started with the end result versus the promises. Are you with me on this? So here, take a little look, ready? If this was, Taz, I don't know how far over I can go here, assuming you can see all this. If this is a timeline of a transaction, I'm literally gonna say, Marnie, Taz, the number one reason you guys have me here is you wanna have your property sold for the highest amount of money in the shortest amount of time with the best possible service. Is that correct? So I want to take you backwards from a home I just sold down the street from you guys in the same community, close enough that they can relate to. It was a four bedroom, three bath home in Huntington Beach, just like yours, wonderful couple, just like you guys, interviewed four other agents, chose me because I think we just connected and they liked the fact that I can sort of prove how I do what I do. Here's what happened. We sold the property and closed it six weeks ago. It was a four bedroom, three bath, just like yours. It sold for $595,000. They got 3% more than we listed the home, for, right? 3% more money. They also, we sold it 22% faster than how other homes are selling in our marketplace. So we got them more money and we did it in less time. And they were, they were really kind. They really liked the process. They wrote a long review on Zillow and they gave me five stars. Now, what got us to that point is probably the question you're asking. What got us to that point? Well, 
we ended up getting eight offers, which is how we were able to negotiate the price up and maintain, you know, getting their mortgage and got it all approved and sold for more than our original ask price. We had eight people, when I sat down with the sellers, I said, here's eight different offers. Here's eight couples that wanna buy your house. Let's go through the price and the terms and the conditions of each of the offers and empower you guys to decide which one is better for you. So we sold it for 3% more, 22% faster with a five-star customer service review. But before that, we got eight offers. Before we had eight offers, we had 87 people through our mega open house, which is the same thing we're gonna do with you, where I drive all of the neighbors, because we know neighbors will know people that wanna live here, and every buyer that I have searching right now online, which is you know about 500 right now, I'm gonna drive them all in to come look at your home to see if it matches the criteria to see how many of them will write an offer. Interestingly enough, of the 87 people that came through, five of them wrote an offer on this property and one of them actually got the house. But how did we get 87 people through? Look here, we had 4,200 impressions on Zillow. We had 1,893 on Trulia. This means that they went to the site, they saw it, they looked at the property. Does that make sense? Um, by the way, on Zillow, 385 of them actually hearted the property, so they were now tracking the property. So that's good, it's different from just seeing it. They actually clicked and said, I like that house. Um, 2,000 people saw it on Realtor.com. Um, we had 3,800 individual sets of eyeballs go to our website and take a look at the property, explore, watch the video, you know, see everything about the home. And by the way, one of the Zillow buyers actually bought the house. They started at Zillow, they watched, by the way, look down here, 873 people watch this brand new video that Zillow has released where now I'm, I videotape the home as well as my other video that goes directly on Zillow where they get you know 164 bazillion people on their site every single month. 873 people watch the video. Of that, one of them actually bought the house. Isn't that great? See, see how this is working? Then we had 3,100 people that saw it on Facebook because I did some Facebook advertising to the local marketplace only to buyers and potential customers that make more than $70,000 a year, dual income families that can afford to buy that house, as an example. Then I had 74 people that hearted it on Instagram. I had 177 people retweet the property and send it out to all their Twitter followers, creating even more virality and buzz on the house. And I had 355 separate people watch the entire video on YouTube. So you can see we did all of this, which drove this, which drove eight offers, which ultimately got them 3% more money, 22% faster, and a five-star review. There was more. We had 83 agents at our broker preview. It's important that we let all the brokers know. This is when we unveil the house to the brokers who in many cases already have a buyer who's looking for a home just like yours. Then over here, we staged the property. We did the professional photography. We videotaped two different ways, one for YouTube, one for, for Zillow only. And over here, I earned the listing and started the process. So Mr. and Mrs. Seller, what questions do you have about the process of how I'm going to get your home sold just like I sold this one? Do you get it? Now, I know this is gonna be a long video and, and you know, Taz, you know, how long is this video gonna be, Tom? Is this gonna be like 10 minutes? I think we're probably at 17 or 18 right now. And I'm gonna argue to say this could be the most important Tom Ferry show I've done all year. I've talked about a lot of things so far this year. At the end of the day, my friends, there is a massive crisis happening right now where there is simply no inventory. And what's happening is agents are walking in, competing and doing whatever it takes to get the listing. The challenge is the poor consumer is hearing the same thing over and over and over and over. If you just simply do something different, if you do something unique, if you do something that makes you stand out, you become the natural yes. Now, this is not the end all be all. This is maybe just the starting of a new conversation for you with your listing presentation. So my advice to you is do a little check. How well do I know my customers, right? Do I absolutely prime every appointment with the video, showing my track record, my marketing plan, my, a link to my Zillow reviews? Like, do I really prime them to know me and understand me and, and, and perhaps create massive trust and awareness before I get there? Do I show up on time mentally prepared? Do I have a great story to begin 
or do I do what everybody else does? Here my company, here my right? I mean, come on. Like, it's 2016. It's time to get fresh. It's time to do things differently. You can't be more of the same and expect radical levels of improvement. You've got to try something different. Now, you know, whether it's a new agent or an existing agent, I love this money time, track record, marketing plan, process, and team. What a beautiful way to illustrate whether it's five things in your debrief or 10 things. You decide, entirely up to you. And then this whole case study, reverse engineer a sale versus what most agents do is simply just make a bunch of promises and hope and pray it works out. Listen, a lot to cover here. Probably need to watch this four or five times. Um, I'm looking for some comments. I want to know, look, this will have 15 or 16,000 views very quickly. If you don't send me comments and let me know, it's too long, I hated it, I loved it, I'm totally stealing that, let me know what you're thinking. Keep me engaged, let me make these shows better for you. Promise, right? Come out of the woodworks and make a comment on my Facebook page, Insta, or right there on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching. Remember always, your strategy matters, and now more than ever, your listing presentation absolutely rules. Thanks for watching. If you love what you're seeing here, then click the button below to join our online community absolutely free. Thanks so much. <laughs>